Now, a new book out today asks the question, can Biden convince Americans that his brand of populism is better than Trump's? In The Rebels, author Josh Green dives into how populism on the left was galvanized by the 2008 financial crisis, sparking an uprising within the Democratic Party led by economic populists Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Could this trio's populist priorities help propel Biden to re-election in November? And Josh joins us now with that. He's national correspondent at Bloomberg Businessweek. It's great to have you back on the show. We'll give the first question to Elise Jordan. Josh, you wrote basically the first book of a lot of Trump books. Uh, yeah. But yours came out first about right-wing populism and the rise of right-wing populism. And what commonalities do you see from the right-wing populism that fueled Trump and then the new left-wing populism? And how difficult is it going to be for President Biden to thread the needle and still keep keep progressives, but keep the centrists that helped propel him to victory in 2020. Yeah, I think the big commonality is that um, there was a huge political backlash after the financial crisis, which on the right, the story I told in Devil's Bark in my last book was how that gave rise to Steve Bannon and Donald Trump. Uh, but the story I tell in, in The Rebels is really the flip side of that, that it also gave rise to this kind of new movement inside the Democratic Party, led by people like Warren, Sanders, and AOC, uh, that has really caused a sea change in, in the Democratic Party and what it stands for. Uh, and the book is also the story of how it took uh, a safe, centrist, moderate president in Joe Biden uh, to, to begin putting big parts of that agenda into practice. And so I think uh, a lot of Biden's reelection challenge uh, and a lot of what he'll end up having going for him in the end is going to be that he really did adopt a lot of these populist economic policies. And even though Biden's poll numbers aren't too robust right now, uh, you can begin to see in employment numbers and the record stock market and the growth of new factories and manufacturing jobs that things are really beginning to turn around in a way that you would want if you're an incumbent president going into an election year. You focused in depth on some of the major characters driving the progressive left's agenda. Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, what surprised you about what you learned about how they operated, not politically, because we see that, but to get policy implemented behind the scenes? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. Um, you know, each one of them faced kind of what I call the activist's dilemma. You know, all of these people were outsiders who kind of stormed the castle. They weren't part of the Democratic political establishment. They all managed to get uh, elected with really passionate followings. And then they kind of faced a dilemma. You know, do I maintain my purity on the outside? Do I, uh, you know, cater to my social media following and so on? Uh, and each of the characters you know, in succession decided, no, you know, I'm here to get something done. I have a, a set of policies that I want to achieve. Uh, and they recognized uh, once uh, Warren and Bernie weren't able to win the Democratic nomination in 2020, that the best vehicle to achieve those policies was Joe Biden. Uh, and I think one of the, the underappreciated stories about Joe Biden's presidency, and, and, I, and I sort of shake my head every time I see the kind of liberal doomerism out there, uh, is that he, he's put large parts of these policies into place, whether it's, you know, two big rounds of stimulus after COVID, um, you know, the biggest environmental bill that uh, anybody's ever seen, even though it was, it, was, it was sort of dressed up as the Inflation Reduction Act, like a huge victory for uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and all the people pushing for a Green New Deal. Uh, so I think it's an, interesting, it's an interesting story, but the biggest uh, differentiator, I think, for Joe Biden is, you know, my book, uh, my book is bookended by, uh, it begins in the financial crisis in 2008, uh, and the backlash that that caused. But if you flash forward uh, to the COVID crash, we have recovered much quicker from that. It took two years to get all the jobs lost back after COVID. It took seven years after the financial crisis. And I work at Bloomberg, so I'm sort of mm -hmm. surrounded by mm -hmm. economic numbers all day. And all of those numbers really do sort of point to, uh, you know, it's about to be morning in America again. What, what Joe Biden's challenge is now is going out and convincing voters of that and convincing them that his policies, which are which are really the policies of the populist left, uh, are responsible for that turnaround. 
Josh, isn't there overlap between the policies of the, of the, of the, the economic policies of the populist right and the populist left? Uh, and if so, um, what are we arguing about? Yeah, I, I think there are to an extent. I mean, one of the things you noticed when Joe Biden came in in 2020 was he did not strip away Donald Trump's tariffs. Um, I, I, I think both Trump, but, but certainly Biden and Biden's administration, uh, understand after the 2008 financial crisis and everything that happened afterwards that there needs to be uh, a big focus on the middle class and in particular uh, in places like the industrial Midwest that really never recovered from the last financial crisis and so you see Biden pushing these big industrial policies um, trying to reshore manufacturing jobs I was in Aliquippa Pennsylvania a couple of weeks ago kind of looking at the ground they're building a new steel plant to replace the one that was kind of torn down in the 1980s. Um, these things are working uh, economically. I think the challenge for Biden politically, though, is, is convincing people, and especially kind of younger progressives who aren't too hot on him right now, uh, that he's really getting done a lot of what my three characters uh, were, were campaigning on in 2020. And, and I think it's worth pointing out, too, you know, at any point, you know, Warren Sanders and even AOC, who turns 35 in October, could have challenged Joe Biden in 2024 for the Democratic nomination. The fact that none of them did, I think, speaks to the fact that they understand that he's really taken up and implemented a lot of their policies. All right. The new book is entitled The Rebels, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the Struggle for a new American politics. Josh Green, thank you. It's great to have you on the show. Congratulations on the book. Thanks so much, guys.